afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar. So I have a privilege to share about the topics one, developing an, enter, an enter, uh, effective enterprise architecture framework for financial services. So actually my presentation uh, today is taken from a real uh, implementation in one of the bank, how to set up uh, enterprise architecture framework. Basically, uh, the bank, most of the bank, uh, I don't think any of the bank don't have enterprise architecture, but they function differently. So what happened is that when uh, the digital enterprise architecture being introduced, introduced, then there will be some sort of alignment and also reorganization and also uh, restructuring the entire architecture. So uh, yeah, this topic about, uh, I will finish maybe less than half an hour, but I will just share a highlight what are so-called a task and a typical impact that uh, when the digital enterprise architecture uh, come in into a typical bank. So let me just take uh, about one minute to introduce who we are. So I think uh, we are from ATD and uh, I'm uh, heading the, the, the group of the company. So we are, for, we are specializing in the consulting, coaching, training, and also running the event like this for, uh, of course, around the topic of enterprise architecture, which is what uh, our passion and uh, what we are specializing in. So we do also offer a very comprehensive uh, training and certification program for uh, enterprise architecture suites from uh, business architect, information, software, infrastructure, solution, um, and also uh, all the, the information or data architecture. So we offer uh, TOGA from the business architect, Archimate, and the enterprise architecture framework itself. And of course the governance, yeah, because uh, enterprise architecture cannot run from the governance itself, like a COVID uh, certified. And of course, all the DevOps and uh, today the context of the ITIL uh, uh, to support the so-called afterlife when we go live, the system, so there will be some sort of a framework to support the operation, like to meet the SLA and et cetera. So we do offer a comprehensive uh, training there. So these are some of our clients. So actually we have more than this, but uh, this is just one of the highlights that the winner of the Open Group Awards in 2018 again 2019. So last year to Giro 2020, they didn't have an award. So this year also might not have, but next year I think they might have another award. So hopefully we can uh, 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 submit more of a successful case study for this type of the prestigious award. And these are some of the client that has uh, so-called subscribed to Gartner and, 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 and what happened is that all the enterprise architecture are being uh, guided, supervised and reviewed by the Gartner itself. Yeah. And these are the so-called award of last year. So this year they have a 2021 award, so already closed. So let's see how many of uh, our clients can win this award. So these are two uh, last year. Uh, two of our uh, clients uh, won in the top 10 EA awards. Yeah, uh, for Pemodalan Nasional Bahad and Mampu. So the rest are all some of the clients uh, in Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, and also Hong Kong. So let me just go straight into the context. So these are the typical context if you are working as an enterprise architecture in uh, typical financial services in the bank, right? So they have so-called, you need to be aligned with the strategy, business, data, and technology. So basically, basically these are so-called uh, high-level uh, context where the architect typically being put in. Yeah? So for instance, in terms uh, of the strategy, so basically is that the architect are expected to answer such a question, right? What is the outcome of the strategy? And of course, people may ask, which business capability to help to fulfill the strategy? Can we answer that? Or which application play an important role for the strategy? Because say, we might ask for the budget, but how does that help my strategy? If you're asking for the key stakeholders. So we need to be able to answer that. And in terms of the business, of course, the question like, is the current business uh, process automated? Because I heard some of the uh, process are still semi-automated, right? Customer have complaint here and the system cannot access that. They have to go to login, lockout, etc. So these are the typical questions that are so-called raised in terms of the business. And of course, the process flow, as well as, okay, which application that currently supporting the business process? Show me the map. Can we answer that? So these are the typical questions that, they, that trigger all the architects if you are uh, working in the typical uh, financial services. And of course, in terms of the data, where is the source of data? Can you tell me? And then why is it so complicated to create this report? I just want to get this report. Why taking two months? Can't we just get it tomorrow? Right? Someone asked you three o'clock, can we just deploy it tomorrow? You still don't know how to get the data? So these are something that are, are, are real is, and it's actually it's non-trivial question, but become a big deal if you don't have a proper so-called digital EA in place. 
of course of the technology what will happen to my business if this application is down which application integrate with with this application right i need to know all so how do we answer this of course to answer this question there are four things you need to be a uh, uh, soko financial services bank need to establish first is that content meta model do we have the structure of our enterprise so content meta model, meta model i can just equate with the entity relationship of the particular system but i'm talking here about the particular enterprise do we have that view do we have that design if not we can answer just now the previous question that i splashed in the previous slide so we need to have some sort of the meta model to get it right yeah? because without this we be the headless chicken and we have become a reactive the second one i think ear process so this is something very very important so we need to know the process and the life cycle so this is talking about of course the framework the methodology and all the blueprint that we need to have in place then the next one is the governance so all the thing that we are putting in place the content and process we need to be governed if not governed everyone can do whatever they like and especially is the in the financial services they are very uh, stringent in terms of the audit and also review and compliance right with the central bank so we need to have so called governance in place and the governance itself need to be so called automated uh, in most of the cases we don't do a manual intervention unless necessary and of course last but not least the correct uh, right ea repository which is what uh, most of the organization is that they have some sort of, of repository but there's some using excel and some using the uh, repository but they don't configure correctly so all these like content meta model process governance need to be embedded into the repository to get the maximum outcome of our enterprise architecture so that the previous question, uh, slide that i expressed we can answer that to the key stakeholders as and when they demand us to answer otherwise architect really uh, you know catch of god and we say boss can you give me one week okay one week we might not get the job that's the reality of life today right the management asking us i can give you tomorrow you tell me one week forget it Aaron. you better you better update your cv no kidding but the reality is that we need to be fast responsive and also we need to be a uh, so called uh, uh, proactive in our engagement and this of course require a framework right just know the process the methodology so we need to have some sort of framework so one of the thing is toga so i believe uh, this is the widely used uh, framework so i believe some of you in this uh, webinar already are toga certified so let me just highlight right just to give you a, a refresher so basically in terms of the preliminary we need to make sure that always get the management buy in because we cannot do architecture bottom up yes we can but very tiring trust me i have come across a met a people that want to do bottom up the journey is very very tough and pain right is i don't know when i can move up to the next level so we need to be able to get the right management support and then we need to get the, establish the principle then after that of course preparing the entire organization to go through the transformation so when we go talking about phase a b c d in the toga we call it about architecture building block so architecture building block of course first is that we need to know the vision and the strategy so where are the organization is heading today in the running a digital transformation once we know that then we can understand what are the business need to change so so whatever thing need to change i we consider it as a gaps right so we we develop the business architecture gap then after that of course logically we look at the data or information gap and then software or application gap and last but not least technology or infrastructure gap if you see here the order a b c d many it people actually they are very comfortable in the c and d right they just talking about data talking application about technology about infrastructure but they don't really uh, understand or they they, they they afraid to jump in into the a and b which is talking about enterprise vision and strategy and of course business architecture but without a and b whatever we do in the c and d we're talking about data application and technology we deliver little value because the senior management can only see the value in the a and b which is an, in term of the enterprise vision and the strategy as well as in the business architecture itself so once this is done then we can develop a solution so solution we are talking here about the first thing first we consolidate all the gap because we know the a the in term of the vision then in the bcd we got the gap so the gap will be consolidated become a project so this project become a transformation project then of course in the f we're getting the project plan assign the team and we are basically got the all the tasks then in the G is where the duration of the project. So in the project seven months, then architect will look and supervise to make sure that compliance is there. Right? So I have a diagram to illustrate this in the next couple of slides. And if there's any changes, changes it become part of uh, life. Because some people asking that, oh, my organization is very dynamic. I don't think need architecture. Well, 
The more dynamic you are, the more you need architecture. If your if your organization never changed in the last five years, don't need architecture. Why? Everything no change. When the thing change fast, that's where you need the architects. Right? You need the architecture to keep track of the changes to make sure that all the changes are consolidated and all the changes can be integrated and in the holistic uh, manner to support the business goal. So in terms of the layers, of course, we're talking about here the Archimate, right? So Archimate for business layer, application layer, technology layer, and then of course the strategy and motivation layer and implementation and migration layer. So all these layers, are, uh, I mean, because architecture is uh, uh, addressing a complexity of the real world. To address or to simplify the real world complexity, we need to make it simple. So one of the way is to make it layer. Yeah? So of course, when we're talking about this um, uh, enterprise architecture itself in the financial services, you cannot run away from security, especially today, cyber security. So cyber security itself is not only at the network, right? Many people think, ah, just leave it to the, uh, to, the, to the hosting guy to settle. No, we have to handle right from the business itself. Then look at the data, application, and technology. Basically, all the domain of architecture need to be uh, uh, looked after in terms of the security. Cannot be just after thought uh, process. And this is an example on the how you address uh, uh, enterprise security architecture. So if we divide between the EA team and the security team, right? So security, if you think like your security are a are, are, are big size team, then you can appoint as an architect, right? But the architect itself can be part of the enterprise architecture team. Okay, so that one is depend on your organization structure. So typically in the preliminary and the vision is that you understand about the business driver, you define the business objective, security principle, risk appetite, and security resource plan. So these are, are very, very important because why? At the point in time, we know the vision and the strategy of the organization. This way we can tailor our security, right? So if the senior management said that security is not their concern, then we can loosen a bit. But doesn't mean we open up the door, but we loosen a bit. But if security is number one, then we can tighten the whole uh, process, etc. Once you understand at the top level, then we can embed the security in our business. Okay? How are we going to run this? Then after that, we can embed into our data and application as well, uh, as, well as all the interfaces with the security team, right? So like identity management, continuity management, security monitoring, compliance, etc. Then we can look at the infrastructure, the technology itself, rather than, you know, we start with the technology or, or application, but we do uh, the rest first. Then, of course, we are looking at the requirement, right? Talking about requirement, we are looking at the business attribute, control, and etc. Then, during the project, we need to look at the mitigation. What are mitigation plan that we can uh, develop? And of course, look at the uh, when we come at the project plan, we look at the assessment, yeah. And of course, look at the implementation, look at the security audit and compliance. And in the change management, we look at the entire governance. Okay, so these are just example that in the typical organization where uh, uh, security are being applied into the architecture. So you look, everything is the structure, right? It's not that you give it to the security guy, two person running around and then talk with the vendor, installing all the patches, etc. We don't know what, what happened. So we need to have some sort of the architecture embedded as part of the entire organization. And this is one of the so-called uh, pictures in terms of the uh, executing a strategy and the execution. So typically, just now you look at the at the TOGAP itself, that they got the vision, they got the business, uh, uh, application data, and the infrastructure. So this is where uh, basically you can look at the so-called the connectivity between the strategy and execution. So the bridge is actually take place in the middle business capability, right? Then I think uh, this is where also uh, one of the uh, uh, key uh, framework today that are being used a lot in the financial services across the globe, uh, which is Bian. okay? So Bian, I think we are very fortunate. I think uh, the next two, uh, the next speaker, uh, Patrick, will be sharing with you on the Bian. Then of course, I will be also doing a moderating at the last session to asking him more. And if you have any question about Bian, I think you can take this uh, opportunity to uh, check uh, uh, and also type in your question. Yeah. So basically the alignment is between enterprise vision to the IT project. This is very, very important because people said, what's the value of this network? What's the value of this system? If you cannot connect to the business capability, then it, it is very difficult to generate value because, because from the business capability, we can connect to the strategy and the vision. Okay. So this is where the, the, the bridge between uh, business and technology, because in the past, we always think like how to integrate business and technology. So the answer is the business capability is one of the way to effectively uh, so-called establish this. 
So this is an example on the capability map in the in the typical bank. So uh, this particular bank, uh, consumer banking uh, department, have a uh, four capability. Okay, so they can develop and manage product services, market, uh, sell product, and manage IT, as well as manage financial resources. So here, of course, can also be looked at the dependency, right? So, so consumer banking in the in the middle, supported by the four capability, and we can also look for instance for instance at this type of the capability map. So this capability map is very very important in terms of our structure in the particular uh, bank. Okay. So we look at the capability in terms of the so-called uh, the map itself, because this map is not standalone, but this map is connected to the rest of the organization, to the strategy, to the application, to the to the uh, infrastructure, to the data, to the business, and etc. So. For instance, this is a, a example on the content meta model that the first thing first that I mentioned, every uh, bank need to have. So they need to define their structure of uh, their physical bank itself. So actually, after we get this, we can we can quickly generate a so-called a digital twin of your particular bank. Yeah. So this one is where if you see the legend on the left. Yeah? So the legend on the left is that they got what they call it a motivation, strategy, business, application, technology, implementation, and migration. These are actually is the layers in the enterprise, right? So in anything that you do, you can you can connect back to these uh, particular layers. Yeah? So this actually we are using Archimate. So we model on them the motivation, strategy, capability map, the organization viewpoint, business function viewpoint, and go contribution uh, uh, viewpoint as well as all the processes and the technology usage itself. So this is just one example that uh, every organization need to have if you want to define the structure. If you can have this definition correctly defined, then you can uh, configure it into the repository and you can run the so-called uh, uh, the real digital EA. So all the questions just now, the, the senior management asking about in my first two slides, you can answer it quickly. Huh? So this is actually uh, the key for a successful uh, digital EA setup. So example on the, this particular strategy, right? So this is basically every department run their own strategy. And so for those of you who are not familiar with this, this is actually the symbol from Archimate. So you need to have define this, right? So we understand zoom in, for instance, for the first, uh, for the payment, right? For the payment uh, layers, the strategy layers. So we can understand that this particular payment supported by many, many capability. Yeah. So one of the capability itself, it will realize the outcome and the outcome will also realize the business goal and the business goal belong to the particular department. So this is one of the way on how we can show how the architecture itself, the capability can help to achieve the goal of the particular key stakeholders. And of course, later the capability will be supported by many, many of the technology or application or data. So in this instance, this is one of the uh, snapshot on the particular uh, application portfolio in a typical bank, right? So it's, I purposely make it small so you don't, you can't really see, but this is actually uh, just one, one of the portfolio of the core banking. Then if we zoom in into the particular uh, area, right? So every core banking uh, component itself actually supporting particular capability. And this is very, very important. Like just now, the, the mapping, because after we define the meta model, so we know exactly where are the dependency, where are the impact analysis. So if I change particular application, I know exactly which capability is impacted and how the capability impact particular key stakeholders, how the capability impact the business and et cetera, et cetera. So these are so-called uh, typical EA function in the uh, many of the EA, are actually EA team are uh, acting as a governance, right? As a solution uh, team. So these are just one example as, as is, as is mean in many organizations or many banks today that I come across, they are typically set up like this. So they have a so-called project prioritization, right? So they got the PMO and they, they start the project, they kick off the project. So EA actually just being called in, right? To review the project, okay? Then in the, during the project execution, so EA team sometimes being called, sometimes don't be, sometimes are not being called at all. Okay, so EA team, if being called, they will look and review, right? But sometimes in this context is that the EA is part of the IT project team. And EA, instead of helping, actually is blocking the project in many cases, based on what I come across and work with the quite number of banks. So, so it's typically, it's not a smooth smooth relationship, right? So if if, if the IT team have a choice, they said they want to get rid, get rid of the IT, IT team, and they, they want to get rid of the EA team, right? because EA team doesn't help, right? 
Then in terms of the so-called uh, any changes, again, back to the to the EA team. EA team being called in and then see whether you want to approve or don't approve, right? So these are the typical uh, setup in the many of the FSI that I come across, yeah? So by right, this uh, the just now the two setup is because you have the, the, the EA is part of the project management. The EA is part of the PMO, right? It's not really uh, quite independent uh, that, that actually all the input need to be done by the architecture team. I mean, in terms of validation, business alignment, strategy, uh, validation, and etc. Okay. So where the EA actually should be, should be before the project management, right? Because people say, oh, I need to set up EAO. EAO to me or to us is that actually is the PMO minus one. So it's basically it's a program uh, management office minus one, where uh, basically you understand, you work closely with the key stakeholders, to discover their vision, their strategy, their mission, etc. And of course, the bottom part is where you need to have the right uh, digital EA repository as a single source of truth for all team from EAO, PMO to IPSM. Otherwise, they will be like a Chinese whisper. You know the game Chinese whisper? They got 10 people. So you whisper one, one statement. By the time person one to person 10, the person 10 say something different. That's what happened in many of the uh, IT projects if you don't have a proper a single source of truth. So the, the top layer is where you connect between business technology strategy uh, together. Yeah. So this is what it should be, right? So if you understand the way the EA should function, so typically the, G, the, the EAO is where uh, you also involved in the EA project initiation. initiation. This is where you start discovering or uh, understand what are the key stakeholders' concerns, right? We, we, we model their driver and their strategy. Then after that, we go into the analysis and design. So we understand the impact bring to the business, to the data, application, and technology. Okay. Then after that, we develop a solution. So solution basically is the high level solutioning, whereby we understand that certain technolo technology required to be procured, right? So we need to plug into the particular technology after the architecture is done. Yeah. So this is typically done by the enterprise architecture office. Then from there, of course, we can hand over to the PMO. Okay. So PMO, we prioritize all the project. So PMO said, okay, this is the request or so-called output from the enterprise architecture team. They got 20 projects, but PMO, we prioritize based on the budget and also priority of the uh, uh, the need of the organization in terms of which project should go first. Then from there, PMO, we execute the implementation. That's where the enterprise architecture actually playing uh, a governance, right? Because architecture now is they know what they have developed. They want to see the real execution. It's like the construction. The construction is after they draw uh, architect architecture, they will go on site to periodically uh, survey or, or ensure its components, right? Then one day one is done, I go live, then they go change management. So, so change management, there will be all the activity uh, required to um, uh, Im um, implement or adapt to the changes. That's where the enterprise architecture office as well work closely with the ITSM team, right? So typically now PMO and the ITSM, they got DevOps, DevOps to combine them. Then they look at the gaps alignment, right? So if they, is there any architecture need to be changed? So these are so-called the, the, the good model moving forwards, yeah? instead of we are doing a governance or solutioning part. And in terms of the repository itself, so we need to set up properly. So they got, uh, of course, we need to embed our meta model, the methodology, or the template references like, like beyond uh, 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 EA framework and et cetera. Okay? And of course, how the domain itself being organized, right? business data, application technology, as well as the whole life cycle. So because architecture is always like in the TOGAF is the like a wheels. So you are rotating, right? So you go to transition one, transition two, transition three. And how you can uh, so-called uh, preserve the previous transition in the repository. Okay, so this is something very, very important. And of course, not, not to forget about maturity. So maturity also are uh, very, very critical. So we need to know about where we are. Okay. So typically, in the in the when an organization just started uh, the, the digital EA uh, journey, so typically they are, they are, their maturity is around uh, 2.0, right? So basically, maybe this year in the middle of the year, right? They started, they measure their maturity. So 2.0. Then after that, of course, uh, next year, right? Next year and also the year after, we are targeting about 2.5, right? Because we are maturing in terms of our practice. Right? In the context of the maturity, they call it uh, de developing. Then after that, of course, we're talking about define. 
Define means we are achieving at the level three. Right? So when you go in the defined states, basically you will have the full integration with your IT team, right? with your software development lifecycle team, and you can onboard your business team together. So your single source of truth should be able to connect from your Archimedes to the BPMN and UML. Then of course you want to achieve next level with this manage, right? But of course manage is level five, but reality is that 3.5 is already highly efficient. We are talking now about efficient uh, enterprise architecture because you don't want to go, uh, uh, I mean, maintaining 3.5 is already good because I we do have done a lot of the uh, maturity assessment and not many organizations can reach, can reach 3.5. It's a lot, a lot of the effort and investment required. Then, of course, if you can, if you are the next, uh, you know, five, six years, when you are, everyone uh, become a, a EA as a culture, maybe you maintain, you can maintain at the 4.0. Yeah? So this is something, um, uh, the journey like. And of course, with that, what we are trying to do is that many organizations today, many financial services, that are focusing a lot, EA focusing on the solution. Um, and some of the manual year process because use Excel spreadsheet and even they got repository but it's not really configured correctly. Then of course fragmented architecture practice more on the reactive and unmanaged architecture asset and independent architecture model. So they got multiple version, multiple project, different project or different version of architecture. So what it should be is that we need instead of solution focus, we need to be focused on the architecture. Right? So we need to be sort of consolidate all the effort into a single initiative. Then of course, talking about manual year process, this way we need to automate all the our year process. Right? Not only the business process need to be automated, but EA process also need to be automated because we are living in the digital era today. Of course, from the fragmented architecture practice, we can unify and we use a perpetual uh, architecture practice. Right? So we are nimble and we are adaptable. So we are we have the meta model. So certain thing that we know that certain uh, meta model are mandatory, certain are optional, and we know exactly where to apply the optional part. Then the next one, of course, um, unmanaged architecture asset, we can use uh, reusable and managed architecture asset. That's why we need to have uh, just now the life cycle itself. We need to know what we have done in the earlier uh, our, our journey and how we can reuse them. So basically, don't need to reinvent the wheel all the time. And of course, instead of independent architecture, architecture model, we can do an end-to-end, -end, right? Integrated uh, model. So we can, we can have a digital map. I think you can look at my earlier presentation. I think I've talked a lot on this. Right, about how you get the so-called end-to-end uh, architecture model. So with that, I think this is my last slide right, about the uh, good news for the FSI only in Singapore and also in Malaysia. Right? So in Singapore, if you are working in the financial services or if you are individual, right, if you're Singapore PR or, or um, a, a permanent resident, you can apply for the IBF grant. Okay? The grant is super gener generous is 90% uh, and you can also claim the uh, skill future 10%. So basically it's free of charge. Okay. In Malaysia also got uh, claimable under SRDA, Penjana and uh, yeah, so pretty much there, but Hong Kong also have a grant, but Indonesia and other country, I'm not so sure. There isn't much grant from the government, but Singapore, in uh, Malaysia and Hong Kong have a government grant available to all the architecture courses.